Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now immediately? Absolutely not. Indiana has numbers here. Clark looks to take advantage. Clark launches. That hits a three. At Iowa, she did everything. You know, however many shots you want to take, whatever you want to do with the ball, you can do. It's it's a it's just a different ball game. Is it though? To watch Caitlin Clark in the WNBA, you'll see all the shots she was taking in Iowa while thrilling fans and filling arenas at an unprecedented rate. It was almost like Cheryl Swoops had never watched Caitlin Clark since the best part of her game isn't shooting the ball, it's when she passes it. And you have some players like an Aaliyah Boston, an Alyssa Smith, a Kelsey Mitchell, like, they gotta have a rock. And that list of players she just mentioned, Look at the assist breakdown for Clark and tell me if you think they're not getting the rock. Oh, and Caitlin Clark just broke the record for most assists in a season. Not rookie record, WNBA record. In fact, Kelsey Mitchell is averaging career highs across the board. It wasn't just swoops. There were other WNBA veterans who thought Clark was in for a rude awakening. Reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against 18 year olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. And the only issue was the cheap shots players were taking at her earlier in the season. It's natural for some welcome to the league rookie shenanigans. You might think this Carter hip check was just part of the game, but Clark could have hurt her neck, her back, twisted an ankle, the list goes on. And these plays simply must stop for the integrity of the game and for the survival of the league itself. And since the players have gotten back from the Olympic break, Clark has led the fever to its first postseason after suffering through the longest playoff drought in league history. Let's examine these last 12 games to figure out what Clark is doing alongside her talented teammates to boost them to an 8-4 record and 6th seed. The first thing that jumped out at me is how much better she shoots from the left wing. Catch and shoot is the highest percentage, and it makes sense since she likes to swing her arms up along the left side of her body. So being on the left wing means her alignment is more optimal. And you'll notice these are all shots on the run. Rarely does she get to stand still, receive the pass, and let it fly. Here's how hard it is to guard her. She comes off double Iverson screens across the court, snaps back up towards the ball off a pin down. The defender makes a bold decision to go underneath the screen, which triggers the player cut towards the deep left wing where she gets it off with an inch of room and drops it down through the iron. Here are two WNBA players wondering why Clark's Iowa opponents in the NCAA tournament weren't guarding her properly. And this became chef's kiss as Clark, perhaps intentionally, set her personal best seven made threes against Brittany Sykes' Mystics. And wouldn't you know it, it's a lot harder to stop Clark getting shots off to her left than people think. Even for these grizzled WNBA veterans who thought they knew how tough the league was before Clark joined. And against Diamond is Shields in the Chicago Sky, we got not one, but two threes going to her left in her face. So I implore you, think before you tweet. I love this set they run to maximize the left side. The cross screen catches her defender going underneath the screen, the first mistake. The handoff causes the two Lynx defenders to get in the way of each other. And the last screen by Boston gets her wide open as she hops into this beauty. Breaking down her recent passing, just look at how she creates over five layups a game for her teammates. That's insane to me. And the biggest recipient of these dimes is Aaliyah Boston. They have a nice set for her where she slips the ball screen on the left side before getting a double staggered screen across the lane. Clark can then do her magic to deliver the ball on time and on target for the easy bucket. Here's a similar action where they send a guard over to cross screen in the lane while Clark gets a ball screen out top. Boston is great at using her body to shield the defender from the ball, and it has nice touch off the glass. Of course, the pick and roll is their bread and butter, and it's because Clark routinely attracts both defenders that Boston gets a lot of shots right at the rim, with a nice, under control yet quick spin around the much smaller defender for the lay-in. They flip the direction of that ball screen in the left wing with the same result. Boston's defender must hedge for fear of Clark's jump shot off the dribble, and even though Tarasi properly steps up to bump the roller, Boston is too physical for that, and Clark's wraparound bounce pass too good. Notice how she spins the ball so it can be thrown ahead of Boston, but then land right in her hands so she can finish away from the defender. Perfect. They develop the killer two-woman game out top as well, as they flatten the other three players along the baseline to give them space to go to work. When the pick and roll is well covered, they flow right into get action, and Boston does my favorite move, the fake handoff that earns Clark an assist and got the Fever a crucial bucket that allowed him to go on and win in overtime. 
The chemistry between Clark and Mitchell has been fantastic, and it's remarkable how often they connect on the old dribble towards the corner backdoor cut. Clark commands so much attention that Mitchell's defender tends to freeze up, and she's so quick and explosive that beating her defender isn't an issue. Add to that the vision and accuracy of Clark's dishing, and you'll have lots of frustrated coaches on the other side who no doubt prepare their teams for this and still get burned often. Where they're really dangerous as a pairing is in transition. Mitchell is one of the fastest players in the league, and if their opponents don't start getting back early, Clark is going to find her with one of her patented 50-foot strikes down court for layups. And putting pressure on the defense early will also soften it up for Clark to come down with less resistance so she can get into her deep bomb game. Cheryl Swoops continues to embarrass herself in an effort to downplay what Caitlin Clark has been doing all season long. Stats are today, what, 20 points, uh, 8.4 assists, 6 rebounds. That's crazy. But five that's point, crazy. Five Is that dominant? Those, those, those are hell of a number. Those are hell of a number. Rookie. But to me, that's not Period. dominating. Like, the number of players in the history of the WNBA who have averaged these numbers is one. Caitlin Clark is the only woman to have ever done this. Plus, she broke the record for three-point attempts per game at nine. She's also broken the all-time assist record. And Swoops is going to try and say she's not dominant? I'd put her in the top five players in the WNBA right now. Now, Clark did start out a little slowly after about seven games. But UConn coach Gino Ariema said this on June 6th, after we'd already started to see some dominant performances. The delusional fan base that follows her disrespected the WNBA players by saying she's going to go in that league and tear it apart. There were actually odds on what are, like she's third or fourth in betting odds on being MVP at a WNBA. These people are so disrespectful and so unknowledgeable and so stupid that it gives women's basketball a bad name. Well, now that we have the full season to analyze, Caitlin Clark is third in MVP odds, and rightfully so. It makes me wonder why he would have called anyone unknowledgeable and stupid about predicting a race where she's going to come in third. Is it because he didn't recruit her out of high school and is embarrassed by that? Did he really think she wouldn't fit at UConn? even if it was alongside Paige Beckers. But nobody's printing. You know, Diana Taurasi was right. This kid's on the wrong team. She's got the wrong skill set to handle the physicality of that league. And she's a rookie. Those comments, sports fans, could only be considered unknowledgeable from a guy who should know a lot better. When a rookie comes in and races up a franchise to heights they haven't seen before, while breaking records not only on the floor, but with attendance all over the country, there is no other word to use to describe her than dominant. If there was one thing I criticize her for, it's the ranting at the referees. There have been some calls where I'm sympathetic, but that happens to everyone across all leagues since the refs are only human. But she's put herself in a precarious position. If she gets one more technical foul, she'll be suspended for a game. Once she figures out a more constructive way to communicate with the refs, I bet it will open up her game even more keeping her in a positive frame of mind so that more of her long-range bombs will find nothing but net, her sweet dimes will multiply, and the wins, plus her Hall of Fame credentials, will continue to rise.